What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. A couple things before we get into the topic of today's discussion. I wanted to say one, this video is not at all trying to put hate on anybody. So please, if you have any comments or anything that you want to say, leave them here in the comment section and don't try and go to anybody's profiles, anything like that. I want to make it very clear at the very start of this video, this is not a hate video. And the second thing is a lot of people have actually been asking about the shirts that I've been wearing recently. They're actually a company called Viore. It's a local company here in San Diego, but they have obviously they have a website where you can get stuff. So I, they actually sponsored my podcast recently. So you guys can use the code for my podcast if you do want to get like 25% off of the clothing. I'll link it down in the description. It's vioreclothing.com. Um, and if you use the code change25, you'll get 25% off. Again, this isn't a sponsored video or anything like that, but a lot of people have been asking about the shirts. So all the information will be in the description box below. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into the topic of today's video. So today I wanted to talk about Tess Holiday, and this is actually something that I saw on her page recently. Now, before we get into that, let me explain who this person is for those of you guys that might not know who Tess Holiday is. Tess Holiday is a plus size model, and a lot of people know about her because she was on the cover of Cosmopolitan like a year ago, maybe a little bit less than a year ago. I actually made a video about that when all that stuff was going on. So that's where a lot of people know her from. But basically, she is a like a body positive plus size model that you know is pretty overweight. A big part of her message being a body positive activist is that you should love your body no matter what. A lot of what she talks about is if you're an overweight woman, you should love yourself. You have as much value as anybody else in the world no matter what your size is. And I 100% agree with that. I believe that if you're overweight, if you're fit, if you're skinny, if you're obese, if you're black, if you're white, if you're whatever, everyone has the same value as a person and everybody should be treated with respect no matter what their size or their skin color. 100% agree with that. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why are you making this video if you agree with everything that she says? So personally for me, I start to kind of split from her way of thinking when she starts talking about health at every size. She's a very big proponent of that as well, is that if you're if you're morbidly obese, you can still be perfectly healthy, and I just 100% do not agree with that. So on her Instagram, she actually recently started posting videos of her working out with a trainer, doing workouts. They actually seem like really good workouts for somebody that's her size. You know, when you are morbidly obese, there are different, you, you have to do workouts in a different way. You can't be doing the same thing as somebody that is going to be, you know, not morbidly obese. So the workouts that she's doing, they look like they're exactly tailored to somebody her size. And I think that she's doing a great job. And I'm super stoked that she is in the gym working out. So with her posting the videos of her working out, she was getting a couple different reactions from what I noticed in the comments. Some people were, you know, ex excited for her saying, it's good that you're working out. I'm really happy for you. But then some other people were kind of challenging her saying, well, if you believe in health at every size, and if you believe that you don't need to lose weight, and if you do, if you believe that everything you're, if you're happy where you are, why is it that you're working out? And then she had to make an Instagram post on her Instagram about that. So this is the post right here and it reads, part of why I started working out more is because this year is going to be my biggest year yet career wise and I need to be mentally prepared for all the blessings coming my way while maintaining looking like the snack I am. Don't worry y'all, I'm still gonna be your fave butterball. So what's crazy to me is that she had to make a post explaining that her working out doesn't mean that she's going to be losing weight. When in reality, like, I think that you should be able to do, like, if you want to lose weight, you shouldn't have to explain to people. And I don't think anybody is really expecting an explanation of why you wanted to work out. If you wanna work out because you wanna maintain your body right now, that's fine if that's what you wanna do. But if you wanna work out because you, you do wanna lose weight and maybe get a little bit healthier, like, I, I think it's kind of crazy that you feel that you need to make a post to explain to people that they shouldn't be afraid of you maybe losing a little bit of weight. For me being curious, I went down into the comments and I saw this comment and her response. So the comment says, thanks for never talking about changing size. Like people can do what they want, but I don't need to hear it. And then she says, yup, before and after photos are so toxic and is just part of the gross diet culture. So as I'm sure you could tell, when I read that, I was a little bit triggered. And directly to you, that's a whole other level of harassment, really. Because I, obviously post a good amount of before and after pictures. And I can say without a doubt, I have never tried to shame anyone. I've never tried to make anyone feel anything other than you can do this with my before and afters. So I think it just goes to show you when you start to feel that way about yourself, when you start to feel like maybe you can't change, which I, I, again, I can't 
I can't talk for her. I don't know exactly where she's at, but she's at a point, right, where she is a, a voice for being, you know, the size that she is, and she's made a lot of money being the size that she is. So she, she obviously, if she completely changed her image and lost all the weight, a lot of that stuff would probably go away. Who knows? I can't, I can't speak for sure, but that's what's going on in my head. So seeing her say that, and then she has hundreds and thousands and thousands of people that are seeing that message saying, Oh yeah, so before and afters are completely toxic. So people that are posting before and afters, all they're trying to do is make people feel bad. And I, I just, that absolutely blows my mind. So I went ahead and posted my own before and after and kind of responded to her a little bit. So this is what it says. Who are you? What does your internal dialogue say about you? For years, my mind told me I couldn't lose weight. And I truly believe that I was a victim to obesity. Screw that. Recently, I came across a post where Tess Holiday claimed that before and after photos are toxic. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I have no issues with Tess Holiday, and I'm sure she's a great person, but making claims like this is silly. There are millions of people dying from obesity. Most of them want to lose weight more than anything in the world. I know for me personally, there was nothing that I wanted more. I was ready for an early grave. I can't and I won't speak for everyone else, but the countless messages I get daily from others who have taken control of their health and life speaks volumes to me. I post these photos to show others what is possible. I post them to share information, not to shame or degrade. Okay, rant over, sorry. So again, I am a huge proponent of body positivity, right? I am somebody that's body is a little bit different. I have a lot of loose skin from losing a lot of weight and my body looks different. So I think body positivity is a great thing, especially people that might be like burn victims, victims that have, you know, burns all over their bodies or somebody that might be missing limbs, whatever it might be, I think body positivity is great. What I've noticed though is that a lot of the body positivity movement has become hijacked from health at every size and from people that are morbidly obese that are trying, it's almost like they're trying to shame people that have lost weight like me because w like they're they're turning it to where whenever you post it before and after it's like instead of it being inspirational to others that are trying to lose weight or trying to actually help others instead they've twisted it to this thing where it's like I'm posting these before and afters to shame somebody that's morbidly obese and I just it literally blows my mind that somebody can get to that headspace and start to really believe that because I, I truly do believe that that's what she thinks and that's what she believes and again there's nothing wrong with that that's her opinion but again, I'm just sharing my opinion. Now there is a very good and valid point and part of this where you should not place all your value and expect losing weight to completely change everything in your life because that is not going to happen. But I do believe that losing weight can help you become healthier in certain areas of your life. But again, you can't think that losing weight is gonna completely shift your life. If you're struggling with mental stuff, if you're struggling with depression or anxiety and stuff like that, you can't think that losing weight is gonna be this magic bullet that's gonna save save all of that stuff and fix all that stuff for you because that's not true. But again, I think that it can help solve a lot of other health issues that you might be going through. Now, when it comes to like diet culture, which I understand is like a huge blanket statement, I think there's good parts about it and I think there's obviously really, really terrible parts about it as well. And I do my best to fight those terrible parts and share the good information that can help other people lose weight, change their lives, and actually make a difference for themselves. What I do think is toxic is shaming someone for sharing their progress that they're excited about losing 50 pounds so they post it before and after and calling that person toxic. Personally, I think that's a very toxic thing to do to somebody that is obviously going through a lot and trying to change their lives. Like I said in my last video, you can completely love yourself and love who you are and hate the fact that you're obese and want to change that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think what a lot of people see when they look at toxic diet culture is they think if you want to lose weight and you really, really feel like losing weight is going to help you a lot, you must absolutely hate yourself right now and you think that losing the weight is gonna make it so you can love yourself. And while I don't disagree that there's probably people that have been there, I think when it comes to successful weight loss, what most people are, are feeling is they feel very much so, they love themselves very much, they love who they are, and they wanna be around a lot longer on this planet, so they hate the fact that being obese is killing them. Because we know with all the studies, Obesity kills. It kills more people in the United States than pretty much anything else. So wanting to lose weight, 
That is not a form of self-hate. I really feel like that is one of the biggest forms of self-love. Now again, this is just my opinion. I would love to hear what you guys have to say down below in the comment section. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have another point of view? I would love to hear it down there. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. There was one other thing that I wanted to say. Oh yeah, look up above I am. Ugh. <laughs> Thank you so much again for watching the video. I wanted to come on here and say huge thank you to everyone that has checked out the Work for Change podcast this past week. We had our biggest week by far. A lot of that has to do with the fact that we were able to have Matt Frazier, three times games, CrossFit Games champion on the podcast. So if you have not checked that out, I will link it down in the description. Again, thank you guys so much, everyone that's checked out the podcast. I really appreciate it. Obey the warning signs. And when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop.